the editors of Radiopedia assembled some questions that they had in regard to COVID-19, and now I'll do my best to answer them. I think it is important to point out here that some of the issues with COVID-19 is that at this point, we don't actually know what best practice is. So some of my answers to these questions will obviously reflect my personal opinion, and I'll do my best to let you know when that is the case. So let's get going here. First question, is CT chest a real game changer in the management of COVID-19 patients given the practical and potential exposure issues compared to a chest radiograph? Well, I'll tell you currently the Society of Thoracic Radiology, the American College of Radiology, and the American Society of Emergency Radiologists do not support routine use of imaging as a diagnostic tool in the setting of suspected COVID-19 due to the significant possibility of both false positives and false negatives. That being said, it has been used in certain countries when PCR testing is not readily available or if the patient volume outpaced the availability of test kit. Moreover, the Fleischner guidelines was recently published in radiology and suggests that chest imaging should be performed in all patients with moderate to severe disease. At my medical center, everyone gets a portable AP radiograph and then are re-imaged as necessary using the portable radiographic technique. Here's my take on it. In the setting of high prevalence COVID-19 in the community, any patient who comes into your hospital with respiratory symptoms is COVID-19 infection until proven otherwise, regardless of what imaging shows. We don't treat the images, we treat the patient. So imaging usually will not alter the diagnostic and management pathways for these patients. Patients still need to be diagnosed with a gold standard means of PCR or some other similar assay. If imaging is to be performed as a baseline or to exclude mimics of COVID-19, then it seems like portable radiography is probably the best strategy to use. It's much easier to clean the receptor of AP radiography than to do a terminal clean of a CT scanner. Next question. Have you personally seen any cases yet of classic COVID-19 CT appearances that turn out to be alternative diagnosis? I will say early on, we saw some cases that turned out to be flu or some other viral pneumonia. However, now that we are in the tail of the flu season and that the rapid growth of COVID-19 has really taken hold, again, the pretest probability of anyone coming into the hospital, at least our hospital, with respiratory conditions is very high for COVID-19, really regardless of the imaging appearance. Currently, I don't see Imaging playing a large role in the diagnosis of COVID-19 patients. Again, this is, this is my personal opinion, especially this time around. And I think in the fall and winter, if COVID-19 were to come back and we are better stocked with test kits, as well as perhaps even point of care assays and tests, which might be superior to PCR in terms of their diagnostic accuracy, I think imaging will play even less of a role, at least in regards to diagnosis. Now, what we don't know is if imaging can guide therapy for these patients. Currently, there are few proven medical therapies for COVID-19. Obviously, there is some early data on remdesivir, but we need to see if that actually pans out and actually alters patient morbidity and mortality in the long term. More on that in the future, not from me, but from the scientists who are studying remdesivir at multiple sites. Here actually is an example of a case that I thought was going to be COVID-19 early on. So this portable AP radiograph shows low lung volumes and diffuse pulmonary opacities throughout the lungs. There's probably small pleural fusion, or at least a suggestion of small pleural fusion. On CT, there's diffuse ground glass opacity with superimposed areas of consolidation. And so I thought, oh, well, this is going to be COVID-19 pneumonia. This ended up not being COVID-19. This ended up just being your straight old flu. Okay, let's move to the next question. Are there any circumstances in which performing a CT as part of the diagnostic workup of COVID-19 is justifiable? Personally, I don't think CT should be used in the diagnostic workup of COVID-19 patients, unless you are primarily looking for an alternative diagnosis. For example, if a patient comes in with a clinical history and presentation consists with pulmonary embolism, but there is a possibility of COVID-19 pneumonia, it would make sense to get a CTA to rule out pulmonary embolism. However, if the most likely diagnosis is COVID-19 pneumonia, it doesn't make sense to get a non-contrast chest CT looking for that. If you see pulmonary passes on CT, COVID-19 pneumonia is not definitely diagnosed. 
Perhaps it increases your diagnostic confidence in decision making and patient management, but it doesn't alter anything. You still need to get PCR or some sort of similar assay to achieve diagnosis. If the CT is negative, you're still not in the clear, as early on in disease, up to half of CT scans can be negative in COVID-19. However, again, all this is my personal opinion. So this is assuming that you have access to PCR testing or similar assays. In situations where these are not available, I could actually see how one would use anything available to try to triage patients using imaging. Something is better than nothing. Hopefully though, in the future, this is not a routine occurrence, especially if COVID-19 comes back in the fall and winter. Hopefully that time around we'll be better prepared. Next question. Do you have a preferred protocol for CT chest in potential COVID-19 cases? Can I perform my COVID-19 CT chest without contrast? Do you think an HRCT chest protocol versus standard protocol makes any difference when assessing for COVID-19? So bottom line, these are all uh, different sides uh, of a coin. They're asking really the same question here. So again, my opinion, and, but I do think this is right. Uh, the CT findings in COVID-19 are pretty obvious. I think they do most of the time slap you in the face. I don't think you need to do anything special. Most centers in the US, we construct images at least at 2.5 to 3 millimeters thick. Really, that should suffice. Even places that reconstruct at 5 millimeters thick, it's probably sufficient to identify COVID-19 pneumonia. I don't see any reason why you would do prone imaging, nor do I see any reason to do expiratory imaging. Certainly no reason to give contrast if you are primarily looking at the lungs. Now, if you think that the patient may also have pulmonary embolism or that pulmonary embolism may be the primary cause of the patient's symptomatology, then sure, give contrast, time for the pulmonary arteries, and look for pulmonary emboli. I will say even the mild findings of COVID-19 are going to be pretty obvious to anyone who's a board-certified radiologist, regardless of the CT protocol. The one instance where it might be someone challenged to see mild or very mild COVID-19 findings is in the setting of pulmonary CTA studies for pulmonary embolism, as these patients are not typically imaged in complete inspiration. Next question. Are there any particular CT chest findings which make COVID-19 seem particularly likely or unlikely? The short answer is yes. I'll refer you to the recent consensus statement published in Radiology Cardiothoracic Imaging. Pretty easy to find. Just Google Scott Simpson, the primary author in COVID-19. I think it'll be the first or second hit. I think that gives you a nice framework on which to base your clinical diagnosis in patients who are suspected to have COVID-19 pneumonia. But again, it's all about pretest probability as well. If you have any of these imaging findings six months ago, obviously differential diagnosis would have been more broad. However, in a high pretest probability of COVID-19 situation, anything in the typical or indeterminate category is obviously highly suspicious for true disease. Next question. Do you think all patients having a CT for other reasons, example, surgical abdomen, should have CT coverage extended to cover the whole chest in the view of the current high prevalence of undiagnosed COVID-19? Now, this is a hard question, and I was personally tempted to avoid it. No one likes feeling uncomfortable. But I think it's a good example of there not being definitive knowledge in COVID-19 and a lot of gray areas. It's really unprecedented in the last 100 years. A lot of the decisions that you have to make have to be catered to your specific clinical situation and resources. And it has to be fluid. You have to be malleable. And very well may need to change throughout the course of COVID-19 during round one, the spring here, or perhaps even in round two in the fall and the winter. And perhaps what you do now will differ than what you're going to do in the fall and the winter. Also, there certainly is data suggesting that most patients with COVID-19 pneumonia will either have a diffuse zonal distribution or a basal predominant zonal distribution. The lower lobes seem to be affected very, very often in study after study, suggesting that if the patient had a CT abdomen pelvis study, which typically images approximately the lower quarter or lower third of the lung bases, you should be able to catch ground glass abnormality on these studies in patients who perhaps have asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic COVID-19 infection. Now, if someone were coming in for a CT neck study, and those CT neck studies or CT C-spine studies, we obviously do catch the apices. I'm not sure what you do in those patients. Personally, I, I don't think you extend down to cover the chest in all these patients. I really think that's overkill. But again, this is a gray area, and I think you have to do what's right for your specific medical center and your catchment area. 
Well, anyhow, this brings us to the end of this discussion. If you want to read more about COVID-19 or see many, many more cases, I think last time I checked, there are now over 80 case examples. Take a look at the excellent write-up on the Radiopedia website. Recently, there's been increased attention on cases in which there's longitudinal follow-up to show you the course of COVID-19 on imaging, as well as chest radiographic and CT correlation. Again, special shout out to Daniel Bell and others for the hard work in putting it all together and keeping that website up to date. Thank you and best health to everyone.